Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zeph from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So, in this video, I'm joined once again by a dear friend of mine, Owen Thomas. Owen, how are you doing? Good, thanks, man. So, this video is a part two in a spoon carving series that I'm filming with Owen Thomas at his workshop in the county of Herefordshire, which is in the west of England, so we're literally right on the border with Wales. Now, in the previous video, uh, I introduced Owen. Owen, if you're not familiar or you haven't watched the previous video, is a full-time green woodworker, both teaching and making uh, in the green woodworking space for in excess of six, seven years? About that, yeah. Yeah, and he's been involved in woodworking in general for many years before that too. So in the previous video, what Owen in a lot of detail showed was how to carve a traditional cow spoon. Now in this video, which is a follow-on from a similar style of spoon, which is local to the Welsh region, we are going to be looking at a dolphin spoon. Now if it's a spoon you're not too familiar with, we will be looking at that in the next segment. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I will also link to that below and you can go check that out. Also, like I said, we went to a lot of detail about Owen's background and how he got into green woodworking. In this video, as you can see by the length of the video, it's a very detailed video and that's because Owen um, is going to be showing you a lot of precise detail from start to finish how to carve one of these traditional spoons. Now, at the time of actually filming this video, could one argue that this is potentially probably the first detailed, if anything, tutorial on YouTube uh, showing how to carve this particular spoon? Yeah, I think so. I've, I've, not, I've not personally seen one. Uh, so yeah, groundbreaking, man. That's it. Two groundbreaking videos, man. How awesome is that? So, I know you're going to love this video, and so without further ado, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video where Owen Thomas is going to be teaching you how to carve a traditional dolphin spoon. So Owen, for those that may not be familiar with this type of spoon, do you want to just give us a talk through? Uh, yeah, okay, so dolphin spoon. Um, the old dolphin spoons were, um, were quite a regional spoon uh, in, in Wales. Um, I forget, to be honest, I completely forget the, the, the area of Wales that they came from, Carmarthenshire maybe. Um, but um, they seem to, the, all of the old surviving ones seem to be from kind of around the same kind of area in Wales. Um, and the, the main um, feature of them is a sort of wave, wave shape. Now, the ones that I like, these ones are these ones are of my own design, um, but I've kept this wave shape. the the old The older ones tended they had a bit more of a prominent, uh, prominent curve, um, and a kind of more of a separate style bowl, kind of like I was explaining with the cow spoons um, in the previous video. Um, these are kind of a, a hybrid of a of a. Swedish style eating spoon and a dolphin spoon, but I definitely think because of this top profile um, and the bottom profile, in fact, um, that these are still a dolphin spoon. And what were they traditionally used for? Um, just a generic spoon. I think. I think. Um, I think probably just general, uh, like a, you know, a general a general purpose spoon. I think. Um, I mean, they were. They weren't. They weren't quite as long. The ones I've seen weren't. Haven't been quite as uh, as long as a cow spoon. Um, they all had like a, this sort of kicked up uh, thumb uh, thumb hold, like that. And yeah, this pr the prominent uh, the prominent piece in the middle, um, which if I, if I held a ruler up to there, this point, this point, and this point, all in a, in a straight line. I don't know whether that's an uh, like an aesthetic thing or a um, function uh, function thing but um, a lot of the old ones had it was a similar um, similar factor like that point that point and that point were all in a all in a line so you've essentially taken the traditional design and kind of made it your own uh, yeah yeah I mean that's that's kind of uh, that's how I like to work um, with it with everything that I do um, the, the bowls of the, the boxes um, and, and the spoons um, it's good to be. I like to be inspired by the by the old ways, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean they need to finish. Then, mm -hmm. um, 
and though I have done replica work for places in the past, I don't um, I don't like to be making replica um, replica spoons and replica bowls and then sell them as my own. So this is one then, so this is the dolphin spoon we're going to be looking at in this video. That's it, yeah. So this is a fin this is a finished one. It's, un it's unoiled at the moment because I only finished it I only finished them this morning. Um, but yeah, this is what we're going to be aiming for. So Owen, what is the first step in the process? Uh, so first step is uh, sp split out some uh, split out yourself a billet or a blank. Um, this is this is a bit that we uh, an offcut from the bit that we split for the uh, the cow spoon video. Um, so yeah, I'm going. I'm just all I need to do with this one now is um, get it to about the right thickness, which is about an inch. And this is sycamore, isn't it? Uh, no, this is this is um, this is birch. A birch, right? This is birch. Um, I quite like using birch for these rather than sycamore, just because because there's so many more curves in it. Um, sometimes sycamores sycamore can be a little a little bit on the tough side, especially especially if it's a little bit drier, and cutting those curves cleanly um, in such a hard in such a hard wood can be a bit of a pain in the bum and on the hands. Mm -hmm. um, so birch is, uh, birch is good. So yeah, I'm gonna split about, split so I've got about an inch um, of depth on for this. Yep, so that's good. Let's see if there's a better end. Um, and now I will use my trusty uh, dolphin spoon template. So one thing um, we will mention on the video now, and this is something you've actually just kindly done, is uh, Owen has actually created a page on his website, uh, and what he's done is kindly given you this template to download. So obviously it facilitates the carving process, makes it a lot easier for you. So needless to say, I will put a link below uh, to that page on Owen's website where he's put the download link for his template. So let's draw around it with a thick, thickish pen. Um, just gives you a little bit of um, room for in case you've got any, in case you have any errors when you're doing the axe work. Um, but I like I like template I like using templates it means I can keep um, I can keep things pretty symmetrical and not have to um, think about it too much okay so I'm going to start again by um, getting the width of the blank down to the right size. And the reminder again, what axe are you using? Uh, I am using a Wetterlings uh, Wildlife Hatchet. And you've customised the handle, haven't you? I have customised the handle. I've actually customised the grind a little bit as well. So I've got a... Um, I don't know how much you can see, but I've got a wider flat on this side mm -hmm. than that side. So it's a little bit... It's a little bit of a side axe, but not, um, not completely. Just um, I found that um, it just bites in a little bit better, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be using a pure side axe for spoon carving because it it limits uh, a side axe would limit the um, it kind of limits the cuts 
that you can make. Like you'd str you'd struggle to get around um, concave cuts with a side axe. Um, so what I just did was um, I just roughly rounded off the back just to take a little bit of material off. Um, so I'm gonna next bit I'm gonna do is to be cutting in the handle shape here. So I'll be working in this direction and then in this direction. For those that may not feel they're as confident as you with the axe, uh, will a stop cut be, be okay? Yep, a stop cut is a very handy thing to use. Um, there's no shame in stop cuts. I know a lot of people um, will probably look down on them as like a beginner thing um, to do, but I know plenty of... Um, Full time, you know, big name carvers who like to use stop cuts. Um, yeah, they're 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 very hard. they they do they can make things they can make things easier. I mean, I I, I learned I learned without using stop cuts. So it, this is just this is just um, the method that I that I'm most used to. But I when I teach, I definitely teach stop cuts. I teach people stop cuts because they're really, they're a really useful thing to do. Okay, so with a dolphin spoon, um, I what I try to do is concentrate on the top profile first, um, rather than trying to take out um, take out material from um, from the side. It's because because there's two um, there's two points that I'm going to cut in with the axe on the top. I need to make sure that there's enough material on the side um, to be able to do that. Um, so I'm just going to roughly shape the the front of the the front of the bowl, and then I'll start cutting the cutting in uh, on the top. Okay, so now we can look at um, shaping the side. So if you remember from the uh, example I showed you at the start, we've got, this is gonna be a high point. 
that's going to be a high point and that's going to be a high point so we kind of join them up with shapes like that so I'm going to be axing in into this piece and then axing this piece at the end so I'll begin with this bit by breaking some of the just breaking some of the fibers in the middle just to try and make sure that any uh, any cuts not going to follow through um, all the way yeah keel heel uh, tip <laughs> whatever you like whatever you call it that's the bit I use so now I'm coming in again I'm going to be trying to cut fairly a fairly uh, steep angle so I'm not going to try and do all of it because you can see it, it, we're going to go down fairly deep so I don't want to try and I don't want to do all of this in one go because the the further down you go the more likely it is that the front's going to uh, split off so I'll go down a little a little way and cut in across Gradually working the way down. Okay, so I've got that started. And it looks like there's a lot of material on the bottom, but that's quite a lot of that is soon going to disappear. <clears throat> so now I do the same process but up here and this this one here is a lot is going to be a lot smaller a much much sort of smaller closed in um, cutting than that end so I try and hold it nice and stable very careful when you're doing this cut especially because there's not a lot of material there so that um, if you slip there's a quite a high chance that, that end piece is going to ping off um, so I'll just try and take really small little cuts can actually work across as well which is helpful okay so that's pretty it's definitely the start of it so now I'm gonna I'm just gonna trim um, some of the back off so we don't have to carve it away so much I think that's probably enough at the moment. So I've got a K 
curve where the lowest point is about where the widest bit of the spoon is. That's what we're looking for. Um, so yeah, I'll, um, that's probably as much as I'll do with the axe. Um, I'm going to add in the in the bowl to start the hollowing, and then we'll switch to knives. So what as I in particular are you using right now? Uh, so this is a Hans Carlson adds. Um, I th think it's the 50 mil, 50 mil adds. Um, I have one of the one of these larger ones as well, uh, which I used to use when I was doing when I was doing chair making. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's cracking cracking ads. Um, apparently, very difficult to get hold of at the moment because since there's been such a boom in spoon carving or greenwood work in general, um, the uh, the demand for tools at the moment isn't being isn't quite being met by the small craft people who were supplying it beforehand. I think it's taken quite a lot of people by surprise. Um, it has gone massive now, hasn't it? It's massive, yeah, it's massive now. And I think, yeah, these these in particular are, are um, like hen's teeth at the moment, at, at some of the places at the moment. Um, just keep an eye out. If there's a list, get on it, because they are, they're a very good tool. They're a very good tool. It's the nicest ads I've ever used. And for this one, if people don't have an ads, this particular bit you're going to do, uh, spoon knife is perfectly... Yeah, yeah, it's 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 not it's not as, as much as it's lovely to have an ads. It is absolutely not necessary to have one for spoon carving. Cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna begin the uh, begin the cuts for the bowl. So you can see I'm not going. I'm not making the cuts too close to the edge because I don't want to. Um, I don't want to end up with visible. Um, Visible cuts further on, but just taking taking these what twenty seconds to do this now is going to save going to save me a bunch of time when I'm um, when I'm using the knives. So, are we? What's next in the process? Oh, so now we're uh, we're back. We're going to be at the knife stage, but first. I like to um, just redraw, redraw the template on, um, just so I've got a good guide um, to try and keep it, keep the spoon nice and nice and symmetrical, nice and even. Um, and once again, there is a link in the description. Going to Owen's website, we can download this, this uh, particular template. That's it. Yeah. So this time you can see I'm using a I'm using a pencil rather than um, rather than a thick pen. It just gives you a little bit more of a um, a fine line uh, to work to rather than a big chunky pen. I mean, when you're axing, it's very rare, you know, very rarely that anyone actually goes all the way to the axe line. You always leave a little bit. So there's just a you know there's a uh, like I said before, a bit of a room for room for tweaking stuff if you've if you've made any mistakes. Okay. All right, so now I've got my got my straight knife. And I'm just going to define the uh, define the edges. And once again, we did mention this in the previous video, but we'll mention it again. What knife is it you using? So I use a Mora One Hundred Six. Um, this standard straight knife but you know you can get there are definitely ni nicer knives out there but um, for the money I don't think you can you you can't you can't beat it um, you know I know I know many many of the top many of the top carvers that you'll have, that you'll have heard of only ever use only ever use more knives. Um, they they they're like the I guess you'd call it the um, industry standard. So I was just removing a little bit there to make this um, back 
cut a little bit easier. So I'm just keeping checking, um, keep checking the lines because I, for some reason, no matter how hard I try, I always manage to make stuff not symmetrical. That's why I use a template. Okay, so now I've got a good uh, a good bowl shape. So I'll start with the um, I'll start with my spoon knife. Um, start hollowing this out. I'll just take this little lump off at the front. Which I can do now that I've gone to the lines. Yeah, so now I'll start with the spoon knife doing the hollowing. So we're just speaking in detail about this particular tool in the previous video, so do go and reference that. But just for referencing it again, this is by Nick Westman, isn't it? This particular tool. That's right, yeah. It's um it's his, uh, I think it's a 65mm Tooker cam. And obviously needless to say, people use whatever spoon knife they have. Yeah, that's right. You don't need to, um, you don't need to have one of these to make, uh, to make one of these spoons. Um, in fact, when I get further along, I will probably end up using a different spoon knife to do some to do some of this Hopefully you can see I'm using this with a, always using this knife with a twist. Um, not, so I'm, I'm uh, scooping rather than pulling straight. Um, it's a lot more controlled than just pulling it straight across and also um keeps um it keeps the uh the, the shape of the bowl even okay so now i've got the rough shape of the bowl so i'm going to start working with the straight knife um on this area here, just to get that transition from the bowl to the neck right. I'm going to take this very point off of there because it's going to be painful. And uh, also, I'm going to remove a bit of material here so it's easier for me to carve the neck down. So again, I'm just trying to follow, this is the bit that I find really difficult on these spoons, is um, getting this uh, shape here even, which again, templates, um, templates definitely save the day.
So now I'm going to work these two back bits of the rim into this point here. It's quite a, it's quite a simple cut to make, but you do need to be careful because it's so thin. You need to try and work the way around. to this side. So anytime you cut any material off of the rim, it pushes the the edge of the bowl further into the spoon. So I am gonna have to go go back um, and carve some more of this um, to get make sure it's in the right place. But you can see here, and I've got a little dink there, but because I used the tooker cam, how it's supposed to be used, and I took the same amount off of either side that, the back of that. See how even that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may now think 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 how think how tricky it would be to do that with, or how long it would take you to get it like that with a regular spoon knife. So that's why I like to use the tooker cam. Going pretty good so far. Um, next bit I'm going to do is um, sort out this hollow for the for the thumb grab. Now, for this, I also use a tooker cam. Not for all of it, but just to start the um, to start the shape off. I find that this that sort of twisting cut. Is um, it's handy to get it started because what you're trying to form here is a um, always a curved surface. So I, I I always start it with this. I do I finish I I, li I like to have them flat rather than sort of concave. So I do finish them off with a straight knife, but I've over the years of doing these, I've found that um, using a using a spoon knife to do these is a lot quicker. It's a lot a lot easier. Okay, so I've got a hollow in there. So now back to the straight knife. Just going to refine this bit a little bit more. So hopefully you can tell what I'm working on is I'm trying to get the top surface of of the I'm trying to get the top surface of the spoon um, finished or finished-ish, so that I can um, shape the underneath. Uh, the the bottom of the spoon to 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 to, um, to suit the top. So hopefully you can see the start. And I always think it looks, it kind of looks nicer if you try and match those two. Can you see the curve of that? Mm -hmm. Trying to match the curve of that, so you can. I don't know. 
that's just an, that's just an aesthetic thing. It's not a um, um, <clears throat> it's not essential, but as a nice aesthetic, it's 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 always pleasing to the eye if one part you know one part matches another part or um, echoes it. Uh, right, where am I at? Okay. I'm just going to start sorting out the bowl a little bit more now. <clears throat> now I've got an idea of where that top surface actually is. Um, So this little fluffy bit in the bottom, I, haven't, I don't stand a chance of getting rid of that until the um, until the wood's drier, especially with um, especially with birch. But I can get the um, I can get the edges to where I want, or to about where I want them to be. Pretty good bowl shape. Like I said, rough fit, rough finish. I can get the once once it's dry, all these uh, fluffy bits will come off easier. Okay, so now I'm happy with where um, where the top is. I can start working on the underneath and bringing that surface up to meet the top in the right places. So again, I'm going to start with the bowl because the bowl's the bowl's the business end of a spoon. I was a little bit, I was a little bit generous with the uh, when I was splitting the billet out, so it was a fair bit wants to come off the bottom. When you're um, when you're making an eating spoon, my feeling is that you want to have the bowl wants to taper towards the uh, towards the tip. So that your mouth, when your mouth um, is running over it, it closes to the end, so it sort of pops off of the end. Oh, interesting. Um, so we used to have possibly one of the best spoons ever made by a guy called Fritjof, Fritjof Runhal from Sweden, where all the best spoon carvers are from. And that had such a good, 
pop off of the rim. Um, so that's why I, I always try and emulate that. I don't think I've ever managed to quite make one quite as poppy as Fritjof managed. But, um, oh, you know, you got to have something to aspire to, haven't you? So now I'm going to cut in the back here. I'm going to try and so I'm using the tip here to um, try and make some tight curves. Just to take a bit of weight out of the back of the bowl. Getting that. So now I've thinned out these um, the back of this bowl of the bowls here, so I can start putting a little the little curve in here that I like to do. It doesn't have to have a little curve, but I've, it's very difficult to do when you've got a really big amount of material there, but you can see it makes quite a difference if you compare that side to that side. It just makes everything flow a little bit nicer. I'm using the I'm using the tip of the knife because you can turn a tighter corner with that bit. And I'm just trying to match um, side to side, so I still haven't quite got these two a little bit more curved in. So now we can start looking at uh, the thickness of the um, the thumb grip. But that's kind of just that's kind of going to be personal preference. Like some people will like it to be um, thicker, so it's easier to hold. Some people will want to have it um, a bit thinner because it will, you know, looks more um, look look a bit more dainty. Um, either either is fine. Um, it's just down to your personal preference. I like to feel when I do them, um, it's somewhere in between. It's somewhere in between the two, um, which I know is not a very helpful thing to say, but there you go.
So I'm forming, now what I'm doing is forming a um, kind of a tapering down to the to this point on the spoon, uh, on the on the thumb, on the thumb grip. So I'm starting here is the widest point of the spoon. That's always a good um, reference point to where your low your lowest bit of the spoon wants to be is visually speaking, the widest point is the lowest point. Yeah, so that looks good. So now I'm gonna start uh, removing some of this material on the back on behind the uh, the back end of the thumb uh, the thumb grip. You have to leave. You have to not. You need to not make this bit too thin. You need to be aware that that's short grain right there. There's not a lot of it by the time you finished, but um, making that to a point or really thin is going to dramatically weaken um, this little piece at the end. Round that off a little bit more. Ideally, what you want to be doing is matching the curve on the inside to the curve on the outside. So that's the basic shape sorted. Um, so now what I can do is start re sort of refining, refining some of it. Like taking the, take the edges off, um, thin it down, take a little bit more weight off of it because it still looks a little bit chunky. Um, so I'm going to start with some little bevels down under here. So I'm still keeping full thickness in the middle. It's just the edges that are um, the edges that are getting taken off. And you'll notice I'm working from both directions. Um, it's because the way I've cut into the way I've cut into the wood means that um, there's a little direction change just about there in the middle of the handle but it does mean that there's um, there's grain running a good long way along the handle Now taking some of that material off you can also sometimes it kind of reveals the shape a little bit better it will tell you what to, where you need to um, where you need to work where you need to take bits off do a bit more off here. Back in this way. 
So again, if there's little, at this stage, if there's little fluffy bits like that, I'm not too worried because I'm, uh, I dry this, I dry the spoon before I do the finishing cuts. Um, So I'm just going to work this bit now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get this curve to start from a bit further back. Make it sort of a hump, a kind of hump shape to get that dolphin uh, look. So as I'm cutting, I'm rolling the knife forward. Uh, that way. So again, see that hump has started to form now. There. up a little bit The real trick to carving spoons, or carving any spoons, not just this one, is to know, is to take as much off as you can while it's green, but not take off so much that you can't do some finishing cuts, because they do really make the world a difference. all that roughed out and ready to dry. So as mentioned, you're now just going to leave this to dry and then do the finishing cuts. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, it'll just when a uh, when the when the wood's this this thin now, um, it doesn't take very long to dry at all. It'll just be a, a few days. Um, I'll probably take it inside so it's in the warm. Um, and it just takes a um, it takes a knife cut a lot nicer. Um, you, just, you find you find the, the the wood's not quite so prone to um, plucking up like you like it has in the bottom of the bottom of the bowl there. Um, I mean, you can see from you can see the difference. So this one was dried. I did that. I did that. Uh, this one this morning. Same tools, but. Um, Hopefully you can see that there is a bit there is a bit of a difference there. So certainly when you oil it, um, when it's finished, you can notice it. You can notice the difference, and if this one feels a lot smoother than uh, than this one. And with the oiling, what are your thoughts about oiling? Do you oil your spoons? Uh, yep, yeah, I I always um, 
use linseed oil on my spoons. Um, it's not necessarily a you have to oil your spoons. Like if if you just want to if you just want to use them for yourself, there's no there's no real need um, to put oil on them. But I have found uh, that if you are trying to sell them, um, people will expect them to have some sort of um, oil on them. Uh, so a dry, what you want is a drying oil. Um, so linseed oil, walnut oil, um, they good op, uh, good options. Um, you want to avoid uh, things like vegetable oil, olive oil, because they they um, they never harden. They just wash. They just wash out, or they go rancid. Right, gotcha. So there you go, guys. That is a wrap for this detailed tutorial with Owen. Very kindly taught you how to carve a traditional dolphin spoon. Owen, I can't thank you once again. Uh, no worries, man. For your time. Like I said at the time of recording this video. We believe this is the only detailed tutorial as such on YouTube showing you how to carve this particular style of spoon. As mentioned at the very beginning, this is a two-part series. This is part two of a spoon carving series with Owen. In the first video, Owen very kindly in a lot of detail showed how to carve a traditional cow spoon. So if you haven't watched that video already, once again, there is a link below in the description taking you to that. There are two other links also in the description below. Number one, there is a link going to a web page on Owen's uh, website where he's giving you the template that we showed throughout this process that he's very kindly uh, given to you that you can download should you want to go out and be inspired to carve your own spoon, which you know, uh, Owen's intention that you do actually do that. So I will put a link to that down below and you can go check that out. Also on that same page, you also have the opportunity to buy one of uh, those spoons that Owen's carved himself. They are very popular spoons uh, when you sell these throughout the country, don't you? When you go well, to your festivals, events. Yeah, uh, throughout the world yeah. uh, from the website. I, I've, I've sold quite a, well, quite a lot of them go to the, go to the States. Yeah. Well, quite a lot of all of my work goes to the states. But yeah, yeah it's been... God, guys out in the US love the green. They do. In the UK, uh, yeah. was it Wisconsin, Wisconsin, and Maine? They're right. the chief offenders. I found. <laughs> That's it, man. You to you to lock up your wallet. I, I, I think I, I sent probably the most well the most T-shirts that I've sent out, apart from in the UK, has been to Wisconsin. So there's if you if you uh, if any of you guys are from Wisconsin. And you see somebody rocking one of my t-shirts. That's it. You, now you know where. Now you know where they come from. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Ishmael Alpha is awesome t-shirts and stickers and patches and all sorts. He does some really cool stuff. Once again, there is a link below to that web page where there's a template and also an opportunity uh, for you to support Owen and potentially, if you want, to buy the work. It's also great inspiration to have that in front of you, accompanying this video uh, when you're kind of trying to kind of uh, follow along. Owen's tuition. And also, with that being said, there are obviously links on uh, Owen's website. He does some awesome t-shirts. I'm picking up my t-shirt today, hopefully. Uh, it's, been, can... it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, so he's got some great stuff on there. Final thing on his website, he does actually have a, a great newsletter that he emails out from time to time. So when you are on his webpage, you have the opportunity, and it will mean the world to me for you to join his newsletter so you can get updated throughout the goings on uh, all year round that Owen is demonstrating, teaching and producing his wares. Uh, and so that is a link below to his web page. Another link also is to his Instagram profile where you can go check out his work that he's posting up day to day, giving you an update uh, in uh, both in terms of the main Instagram profile and also the Instagram stories. Uh, and you do a lot of turning. This is something we went into in the first video. He's renowned also for his turning. So you can see a lot of stuff that is related to that also. So as a final repeat, Below is a link to the first video uh, that accompanies this two-part series. There's also a link to the webpage where you can download the template and find out more about the work Owen does. And finally, there's a third link to his Instagram profile where you can check out all his myriad of things that he's getting up to. There's a lot of links, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. We've got to make sure we have everything keep, covered. It keeps them busy, eh? Yeah, that's it, man. You can spend more time on social media now. So there you go. Are there any uh, parting words from yourself in terms of those that are watching uh, and seeing the process that you've outlined. Uh, well, I just uh, I just like to say I appreciate every one of you guys that has uh, watched this, managed to watch it all the way through. I know it's a long video, but um, I hope you guys get a lot out of it, um, a lot out of these videos. Um, I really like teaching, um, so I hope this is helping you guys. Yeah, this is someone that uh, uh, Owen teaches professionally, by the way, throughout the UK. 
Um, so this is not a small thing, these two videos. I'm once again genuinely grateful and appreciative for Owen to have me down uh, in his workshop, his beautiful surroundings, to film this for those of you watching, to be inspired to uh, you know, kind of carve along and also see what he does. Um, so it means the world to me that you watch this video and also for Owen for taking the time out. So there you go, guys. That is a wrap for this two-part series. We hope you enjoyed it. Please do let us know your comments and suggestions down below, uh, what you enjoy, what you took away from these videos. And that is a wrap. Nice one. There you go. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one. And as always, we hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. From Owen and myself, peace out.